okay ravin gurus so i would like to uh, ask you about this you have the power apps project right mm -hmm. so i would like to ask that uh, which you have used may, many formulas and many functions in power apps mm -hmm. so uh, how to how you can optimize the power app application to optimize the power app application first uh, you can try to avoid um controls okay instead of using a uh, labels you can be use the gallery okay instead of using buttons uh, for the design and other things you can be use the containers okay instead of using collect function and clear okay you can be use the clear collect <clears throat> to avoid the network calls you can be load the all the data in locally in your power apps to avoid the network <clears throat> fetching to the server directly also you can be do some other things like uh, you can shape your uh, data okay like in the fish in sharepoint like 20 to 30 columns okay so just uh, take only the required columns that is required okay uh, try to avoid number of columns okay also <clears throat> by following this some of the features you can be optimize the performance of the, your power apps yeah okay right. so okay. there are some lots of things small small things we can be do but these are some of the major things we can be follow <clears throat> okay okay right. so like uh, the next uh, question i would like to ask about the security rules and permissions like what are the security rules and permissions in the power apps? Okay, so in the security rules, okay, uh, we have the two apps. One is Canvas, and second one is Motor. Okay, so in the Canvas, we just <clears throat> create security roles. Okay, in the backend manually. Okay, like admin, developer, and other things. Okay. Then we can be check that role in the power apps and then <clears throat> hide the controls and other things on the basis of that. Okay. But in model driven app, okay, it is built on the data works, okay. It is highly secure. So in that we have the multiple roles, okay. Like we have if for every record, we have the <clears throat> there are three types of roles are mainly present. Okay. One one is record type privileges we have means we can be share the row okay after that we have the column size profiles okay in that we can be show hide the <coughs> columns okay uh, so let's we go some more deeper in this topic okay <coughs> so in the secret rows <coughs> so in the security rows we can be create assign read append append to privileges of the records we can be give okay so for that purpose we have the different secret roles like system admin shaper system customizer basic user and so on okay according to their roles okay we can also create the custom secret roles according to our needs okay also in the secret roles we have the business units after that uh, um teams okay in the teams we have the different teams also okay one is owner team and second one is access team okay owner team means who has the ownership okay and access team means who has the only access okay to, for that specific record that we share with the user or the team okay so in the business unit <clears throat> we have the multiple business unit like parent okay then main and a sub business units as well okay also we can be have a hierarchy of security models like position hierarchy manager hierarchy so we can be doing that capability also. okay and to create the column level security we have the column level <coughs> security profile in the our solution so we can be leverage that as well okay so this is a little bit overview about the security 
uh, roles in the power apps in the uh, modern domain. Yes, 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 it was good. So the next one uh, I would like to ask about us. Uh, can you tell me about CI CD by play? Okay, so yes, I also implemented this in my uh, recent project. Okay, in the expense management. Okay, because in this project, we are developing this project in the multiple stages. Okay, so first of all, <clears throat> for that purpose, we develop this CI CD pipeline. Okay. So basically, we use CI/CD pipeline uh, for the continuous integration and continuous deployment. So as I mentioned, in our first project, we have to do the uh, some of the modification after publishing the first <coughs> module. Okay, then also we are developing that. So that's why we use the CI/CD. Okay, so let's we go and uh, <coughs> let's I explain how to create CI/CD pipeline. What rows permissions required? Okay, so first we need the at least two environments. Okay, after that, as your ID app registration, we have to do from that we need a client ID, secret ID. Okay, after that, we need to add that app into an environment. Okay, and for that app, okay, we need the system administrator room. Okay, for that admin service for that service principal account. Okay, and also in CI CD pipeline, <clears throat> when you create the app, okay, for that purpose we required Power Apps runtime privileges, Graph API privileges, okay, dynamic CRM privileges, and other services. Okay, so this is <clears throat> the prerequisites for CI CD. Okay. In the CI CD, uh, simply first we create the project, then in the project, we create the pipeline, assign the agent, okay, then we add the required <clears throat> conditions, okay, like uh, who I am, okay, power platform, tool installer, okay, then, <clears throat> then export and then import, okay, so some, just are some of the steps we follow in CI CD pipeline. Uh, okay, Ravind. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you have also you you are also familiar with Power Automate, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would like to ask that what is the difference between workflow and workflow? Okay. So <coughs> workflow and workflow engine. Okay. So I not known about. Uh, Workflow engine, okay, but I know about the workflow, okay, in the Microsoft Power So basically, when we have to automate the task, okay, so in that case, we use the workflow, okay, it is present in the data work, okay, we can be created from that, okay, and we can also create the custom workflows to add the additional logic, okay, that is not we can be doing the Prebuilt workflows. Okay, so we can be write the C sharp or dot net code. Okay, in the custom workflow, and then we can be write our logic. Okay, it will run in the background asynchronously and synchronously as okay, the both ways. Okay, workflow always run with the context of the user. Okay, means who is triggering that. Okay, under the his privileges that workflow will run and. Uh, yeah, that's all about work. Yeah. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So I would like to ask that um, what are the Azure Logic apps and how will you use it in Power Apps? <clears throat> okay, so Azure Logic apps. Okay. So in uh, my one of the application in the a smart service desk okay we use the azure logic apps okay so if you know in canvas we cannot be write the javascript correct so to write the javascript we use the azure logic apps okay because in azure logic app we can be write the javascript okay so this is the main <clears throat> advantages of azure logic app okay azure logic app is similar 
like the our power automate okay we just <coughs> send the request and receive the request okay so let's see how to achieve that okay so first the input we have taken from the power apps okay and run the flow through the power apps okay so after that in the um, we call the power automate flow through that okay so in power automate flow we call the azure <coughs> logic app okay then we run their flow and then we just uh, <clears throat> take on the input from that as a logic app all the calculation that we are done okay and then we send it back to the power apps so this functionality i have to uh, in azure logic app okay um, yeah that's all about azure logic apps okay so uh... I would like to ask that how will you connect an external website or API endpoints to Power Apps? <clears throat> okay, so to connect the external website or data to the Power App, we have the connectors available in Microsoft Power Platform, so we can be leverage the capabilities of that connector. Okay, I also created some of the connectors in my previous project. Okay, for Smart Service Desk, I created the one of the connector for the open ai also in the express management uh, by using api key we just created an uh, one custom connector for the zoho to integrate our <clears throat> all the re required data for the project okay as you know zoho is the crm software okay in one of my express management okay there is a project related uh, things is present for that okay we get an apis from the client and also the url and other thing of complete documentation by using that i just created a custom connector okay and here i face one difficulty also okay so we need to create the share governance connector share governance connector means okay end user will not uh, have the api key so we have to pass that dynamically in the custom connector. So in that way, uh, after some doing research and other things, we find the two ways. Okay. So in the custom connector, when you in the first step is like uh, giving the basic overview. After that, we have the security. So in the security, we selected none. Okay. In the third step, we have the definition. So in that, we can be in the actions. We can be add our. <clears throat> url okay and from there in the header we can pass the api dynamically okay and also one more thing in the definition we have the policy okay in the policy also we just created an <clears throat> one policy to keep data secure okay so in that also we just pass that key and then use prompt to the user okay by using these two tricks like user is not user can access the data but uh, you will not prompt for the api key okay, okay. so like uh, my next question is uh, have you used like dlp policies uh, yeah i use dlp policies also and uh, okay so uh, we implemented this thing also okay so dlp policy as uh, dlp stands for data loss prevention policy it is of three types okay first one is business second one non business and third one is block connected okay so business connector are those that is provided from the microsoft okay like uh, this we can be defined on the basis of our uses and from the organization it's very on the basis of the usage and other things okay non-business are those okay <clears throat> those we categorize as a norm okay that is like uh, uh, not provided by microsoft or not a standard um, actions okay so we can be categorized that as a non-business okay and also the dlp we cannot be share the data in between uh, business connector to the non-business this problem face okay lots of time so for that also we try to move most of the connectors in the non-business okay standard connectors only we used there 
Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, next question I would like to ask that how will you extract the data from SQL Server or Dynamic 365? Okay, uh, so um, in the SQL, I mostly not work with the SQL, but I work with the power of to consume that store procedures and other things. Okay, so in the help there. Okay, so for because of that, I know. Okay, so let's I explain you how it's work. Okay, so. <clears throat> So previously what's happening, uh, we create the power automate flow, okay? And then utilizes that uh, store procedures, okay? By using a SQL connector. First we create an SQL connector in the, in the connection, okay? Then we can be use our power automate flow, okay? To call that store procedure. And then by using that we can read and also to perform the CRUD operation by using that, okay? Uh, and that flow we are calling from power apps and getting the responses okay but uh, one new feature is also came in the mm, april 2023 okay that we can be directly call uh, sql in the power apps okay so <clears throat> let's uh, explain you how it's worked okay first uh, it is a preview feature so that's why you have to go and turn out this okay in the power app setting okay after that Create your um, SQL uh, connection, okay, with the Power Apps, okay. After that, you can be um, in the. Um, you just go to your SQL connector, okay, and just try to add, okay. There now you can be see uh, the store procedures also, okay. Two top columns, okay. One is table and second one is store procedures, okay. So you can be directly use that store procedures, okay? Like if you have to repair the tables, you can be use collect. Then your collection names, then directly you can be called the, the store procedure, like your connection name, okay? And then directly store procedure name, okay? And what things you needed, okay? That is present store procedure. Also, Pirates use the intelligence of that, like if you need to ex, uh, present the email in your store procedure, so it will use the suggestion to you also so using that we can also utilize the <coughs> store procedure also in this um sql okay like if you use this connector okay so in the output you receive the values in table within table format okay currently so to access the data we have to use the uh, nested galleries okay so in this way, I just work with the SQL connector and the Dynamics 365 data means simply we have to use our uh, data was stable in the Power Apps and as well as in modern Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. 